Welcome back students who are taking financial accounting and in this series of videos we are covering the theory for chapter 8 which is on long term and other assets. In the last video we had covered um, just basically introduction what we're going to be talking about in uh, this series of videos and right now um, we're going to actually start out with the cost of fixed assets. Now um, you know, a lot of this material, uh, like if in Chapter 6, I didn't really have that much to say about uh, the material in Chapter 6 because it was basically, you know, just read in the book and you'll get the gist of it. And this is somewhat um, similar in, in case. Um, and you'll see as I go along here. And, um, I mean, we have covered, in, in this video, we're covering the cost of fixed assets and depreciation, okay? But um, as we move on to the next slide for depreciation, you'll see that I'm going to refer you somewhere else. But with the cost of fixed assets, um, the what I need, what I should tell you about this is, I mean, your fixed assets um, show up on your balance sheet. Um, you generally have your cash. Then you might have petty cash. You have marketable securities. You have your accounts receivable, and now you're going to have your fixed assets. Your fixed assets are things like computers, furniture, computers, furniture, machinery, right? Uh, basically, these things, all right? Um, and the the cost on the fixed assets is relatively easily uh, to determine. It's what makes that fixed asset serviceable. Now, notice I don't have, and I'm, uh, you don't have in this list because it's not in the textbook, but like an automobile. And it's easy to, uh, I'm going to use the automobile um, as an example. It, it, you know, should have been included in that list in the textbook um, because it is one of the more common things that are uh, an asset that gets depreciated. Um, but be it as it may, um, let's take an automobile. Let's say you buy a brand new automobile and it's it, um, the selling price is fifty thousand, and you pay cash for it. Okay. Well, the book value is going to be that fifty thousand. In other words, you'll debit automobile, and you'll credit your cash for the fifty thousand. Okay. Um, but what if? Now remember, we're talking about the cost of fixed assets here, okay? The, the cost of fixed assets. So let's say we're buying a used van, okay? Um, and let's say we pay, we're going to pay $3,000 for that van. But that van needs some work. Um, maybe it needs, I don't know, a new alternator, which costs like $300. Maybe it needs new tires, which is $600. Uh, maybe it needs a tune-up. Let's call that $100. All right. Um, so that's an additional $1,000. Okay, whatever amount. So you're going to take the the van to the garage. They'll do the work, and you'll get this bill for $1,000. Now, when you originally purchased this van, you're going to debit your you know van or automobile, right, for the $3,000. And you're going to credit your cash for the three thousand. So you've booked the van at three thousand, but that's not the uh, the book value of the van. Why? Because you have to spend an extra one thousand dollars in order to make it serviceable. So as you receive these invoices, right, you'll debit van for three hundred credit cash, assuming we're paying cash, right? Um, we'll debit van for six hundred credit cash for 600 and we'll debit uh, van for 100 and credit cash for 100 so when we um, post all of these journal entries here's my van account and I'm going to have 3,000 I'm going to have 300 I'm gonna have 600 and I'm gonna have 1,000 and that I mean 100 and that's going to give me a total of four thousand dollars is what my book value of my van is that is what I'm going to use to depreciate that's the value I'm going to depreciate now um, 
here's here's the thing. It's a, a little bit of a tricky thing in that, um, you know, you just bought this van and you spent the time and the money, you know, getting it, making it serviceable. All right. And whatever it takes in order to make it serviceable is whatever is going to be that book value. Now, you put it out as soon as it, you know, you're going to actually quote unquote use it in the business. Um, that is a, def the, a, a dividing line. All right. Here is the van and here's the usage. So if you have, you know, the van is the original, you know, price that you paid for it and any, you know, anything that you need to do to it in order to make it uh, serviceable. And sure, I'm talking about a used van, but the thought just maybe occurred to me, maybe you're repurposing something. You know, you could have bought a brand new van and let's say pay 25000 okay, but, um, you know, you have to paint it for whatever reason, all right, um, on the inside, you know, uh, it, you know, and as I'm talking, things are just popping into my head here. Let's say you put surveillance equipment in it, all right, so I can't even spell surveillance, all right. You put surveillance equipment in it. All of these items that you pay for in order to make it serviceable would become part of, you know, the book value of the van. Okay, so it's not just a used van that you have to, you know, do some work on in order to get ready. It could be repurposing of, of an asset. Okay, whatever it is that you need to do to repurpose it in order to get it ready for usage. But once you have that amount in this case here we'll go back to the used van it's four thousand all right as soon as you put it on the road all right as soon as you start to use it you can no longer put items against the book value okay you 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 fix this van up and you say oh, and let's say you happen to have a an hvac uh you know, repair business, okay, and you have several uh, repairmen, and you, you know, it's a new guy, and so you bought this used van, you got it all fixed up, and you give it to the new guy, and you put it on the road, say, 317, okay, well, maybe a week later, um, let's say the alternator goes bad on it, <coughs> excuse me, the alternator goes bad on it. Now you have to have that alternator replaced, and let's say that costs an additional $600. Well, now that $600 is in uh, is usage, so this $600 would be expensed. Okay, it wouldn't go against the the book value of the van because you're using the van for its its intended purpose, right? So when you have that $600 expense, you debit auto expense or auto maintenance expense and you'd credit your cash for these six hundred dollars okay. so um, I want you to you know understand that when it comes to the cost of fixed assets it basically boils down to you know what the book value is is what it takes in order to put it in uh, to put it into service now the reason why I'm pointing all of this out is because I want to talk um, land and building improvements in just one second. I'm going to discuss this as a separate thing. Um, I'm also going to talk about this basket. Basically, buildings, machinery, equipment, f uh, furniture and fixtures, automotive, computers. Oops. Uh, how did I get MO for computers? <laughs> uh, computers, you know, whatever asset. Those are fixed, you know, that you're going to buy, that you're going to own. I mean, what's the definition of an asset? Something you own. Um, you know, that will become a fixed asset. Uh, the textbook just happened to give these categories, right, which are the more common categories. And those items are all going to be depreciated. Now, before I get into land and land improvements, I want to talk about the basket purchase of assets. Um, you know, you can, you know, if it's, uh, let's say it's a big business and they're, um, you're going to buy out somebody else's business and that business has a building, it has land, has automobiles, it has uh, furniture, computers, I mean, you're, you're buying everything out 
you know, that's called a basket purchase, right? And let's just say it's, you know, you spend $1 million on all of those assets, okay? You don't just make one line item on your balance sheet for $1 million. No, you have to break everything down. You know, you'll have your building, you know, your autos, your vans or whatever, your uh, land, your furniture, so on and so forth, okay? You'll break them all down and the total of all of those items will be, you know, $1 million, you know, your purchase price. So basically that's how a, a lump sum basket purchase works. Just realize it's not that complicated. It's not anything special. It's just a matter of, oh yeah, you know, you're going to pay X number of dollars for an, for a bunch of assets. That's all. But you're still going to um, list those assets individually on your, your balance sheet. Now, as far as land and uh, land improvements are concerned, land is um, somewhat special in that land is not depreciable. Okay, you can't depreciate land, right? Land and land improvements are two different things. Land improvements are depreciable. So, you know, when you buy land, and you know the book, you know, the book goes over things like uh, you know fencing, which is a, a very common thing um, for land improvements, um, paving, you know, driveways, things like that. Um, so you, when you buy a piece of land, you may make improvements like this. And you'll have two separate accounts. You'll have land, and you'll have land improvements. And of course, the land improvement, P R O V E N T, right? Um, the land improvement will depre be uh, depreciated. Okay, you'll be able to depreciate these items. So let's say you spend, you know, uh, $8,000 on land improvements. Well, you'll be able to depreciate that $8,000, but that $100,000 that you spent on the land itself, you can't depreciate that. So um, when there's a purchase of land, um, you know, most often, um, uh, right up front, you, you generally won't have a land improvement unless, of course, the, you know, you're just buying something that's just totally dilapidated, you know, thing comes to mind. Uh, maybe say you buy a, um, a drive-in, okay? You know, here, you know that hasn't been used in ages and ages and ages, okay? And there's grass growing up through the to the, the pavement and stuff like that, right? Um, sure, you're buying the land and you might have improvements there, but generally when you buy a building on that's on land, you, you know, you generally don't have a land improvement uh, to be made when you make the original purchase, okay? Um, later on you would. Um, but not right up front. So, you know, with that said, I'm not going to go much more into it. Um, and I wanted to go into depreciation here. Um, but I think I'm going to end up uh, making another video for that because I'm already at 14 minutes. Just be aware that the cost of the fixed assets um, are whatever is in, um, in summary, the cost of a fixed asset is whatever it takes in order to be able to put it into service. Okay. Um, whatever that book value is, you know, the, the cost or anything that you need to do to that asset ends up being the book value. Once it's placed in service, then everything else gets expensed, right? Any, you know, um, just like in the automobile, you know, once you start using it, you know, if you get a flat tire, that's an expense. Okay. Um, you know, building, uh, you know, uh, if a window breaks, you know, that's an expense. So, you know, just be aware of that. Um, the basket, you know, you buy a bunch of assets for one price. You list each and every um, asset singularly and you depreciate them singularly. Okay. 
Land is not depreciated. Is not depreciated. But land improvements are depreciated. Okay. Um, also, too, and this will be uh, the thought just occurred to me in the reporting of this. You know, um, the textbook is has land up here on. You know, they discuss that first. But and I'll cover this more in, in reporting. Um, generally, the way you list your assets from top to bottom are due to liquidity, meaning land is the the least liquid. Okay, so land would be on the bottom. Um, you know, buildings would be, you know, next to it because it's hard to sell a building and land. Okay, things like machinery and equipment and furniture would be listed first okay um, so you don't think that everything goes in the order that you see here okay actually um, it's kind of like in the opposite order to a certain extent as I look at it here um, based upon the way the textbook was presented right so just be aware of that right so that's all I have to say about the cost of the fixed assets and in the next video um, we'll briefly discuss uh, depreciation Okay, so we'll see you then.